the iOS 18 public beta is officially out, and if you're looking to update early, these are some of the features that you should try out first. So with your home screen, you now have new home screen customization options, like being able to freely place your widgets and icons anywhere on your home screen. You can leave some blank space in between. Maybe you wanna see your wallpaper a little bit more. And also you can change the colors of your icons and the size of your icons. So you can have a dark, tinted, uh, or of course you can go with larger dark and tinted icons. And with the tinted, you can go ahead and slide through the color picker there and choose whatever color you want. And it'll change all of your icons, no matter what, throughout your entire system to be that shade of whatever color you picked. And so you can have some pretty cool home screen customization uh, options available at your fingertips, which is something that we don't usually get with iPhones. And now we finally have it in iOS 18. You also have the ability to customize your control center. And so when you swipe down, you'll see your normal page where you have access to a bunch of different quick controls. But then if you keep swiping, you'll have one for media specifically. You'll have one for your home app specifically, all of your home uh, smart home toggles. And then you'll have one for connectivity. But if you want to add more pages, you can, and you can freely place these quick controls anywhere you'd like, and you can also resize them as well. And third-party developers will also be able to add in its own functionality for their apps inside of Control Center. Another thing that goes hand in hand with the quick controls from Control Center is on the lock screen, you can change the little flashlight and camera toggle that we've had forever. You can make that any quick control that you would see in your Control Center, which is nice. Or you can get rid of them completely if you don't like them. And also with the action button, you can add in any quick control that you might want. And so there's just a little bit more of that customization experience and theme happening throughout iOS 18, which is always welcome in my opinion. The Photos app in iOS 18 has also been redesigned and you've got a bunch of different views here. So there's a home view, like when you first open it up, you're gonna see all of your photos here. And then if you start to swipe down, this is where you can go kind of through that whole all photos look. But then you'll see at the bottom, there's months and years. And also the little icon in the far left will give you the ability to sort by recently added, uh, by date captured. And then if you click on filter, you can either filter out or just only have screenshots, videos, photos, edited photos or videos, and favorites, which is nice to be able to find those photos quickly and easily. And then if you were to keep scrolling up, uh, as you can see here, there's a bunch of different categories down here on this home screen with recent days, peoples and pets, pin collections, memories, trips, albums. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. But the other thing is this view here, if you wanted to swipe left to right, you'll see there's a carousel view of the featured photos. Uh, featured memories, library, your favorites, uh, your videos, and then you can customize it further and add whatever one uh, section you want, which is always nice. If you clicked on it here, you'll see there's recent days, peoples and pets, like all of the things that were at the bottom list there, you can add in that carousel view. In the Messages app in iOS 18, if you click on the little A icon here, this is new. This is for text effects and formatting options. So at the top, you'll see you have bold, uh, italic, underline or strike through, and then you have about eight effects here, big, small, shake, nod, explode, ripple, bloom, and jitter. And these are available for not only the text that you're about to send, but any stickers or emojis, which is always nice. And you'll see those text effects happen on your end, and also the recipient will see that as well, which is pretty cool. Also in tap backs, you're no longer stuck with only the heart and the thumbs up and thumbs up. You can actually add any sticker or emoji to your tap backs, which is always nice. You just keep on swiping left there, and you'll see that there are other options that you can add in. And now finally, you can send messages at a later date, up to two weeks early if you'd like to. So if you happen to remember that someone's birthday is coming up here in the next week, but you think you might forget on the day of, you can go ahead and Start typing out your text and then hit the plus icon in the top left of the keyboard and you'll see send later as an option and then you'll be able to choose the exact date and time. And then of course that message can, can be edited before it gets sent out, but you'll have it ready there and it'll get sent out at whatever date you choose. So you're no longer gonna forget your friends or family's birthdays, or at least it won't seem like you did uh, with that new send later option. Last but not least in messages, RCS support is live and it does work and it works really well. So I can now send videos or receive videos from people who have Android devices and they no longer look terrible. They're no longer small and grainy. Everything looks at its maximum quality, which is great. Same thing with photos. 
windows. Uh, group messages will be fixed now. You can see typing indicators from them. It just makes messaging somebody with an Android phone a much better experience. And you'll see at the bottom, it'll either say iMessage, or if it's a text, it'll say SMS or RCS. And so that's how you'll know uh, whether or not that person has RCS support. And lastly, in iOS 18, the passwords section of the settings menu has been lifted and brought into its own app. And it looks a lot like the Reminders app here. You've got about six different categories. There's all of your passwords, there's pass keys, there's two-factor codes, Wi-Fi, security. Uh, so if you have any security vulnerabilities, which apparently I have 173 and I should definitely address that, that'll be there. And then any passwords that you might have deleted recently. And then at the bottom here, you can add or manage shared groups or add a new password or passkey. And I really like having this as a standalone app. It's excellent and it looks really clean and minimal and you can go ahead and generate or search for any of the passwords or passkeys that you might've created. Of course, there are way more features and things that we're gonna talk about in upcoming videos. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And let me know your favorite iOS 18 features so far in the comments down below. This has been Daniel with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.